Hello and welcome to a new video series on our channel that is machine learning using Swift language. So throughout the series, I'll be exploring everything that Apple has to offer to developers in terms of machine learning. I'll start off with a basic image classification in creating your own training models for image classification, audio classifications, facial detection, text and barcode detection, reg regression models, and everything new in Core ML. So do subscribe to my channel if you're interested in that. I make daily videos on everything that can be done using Swift language. So let's start off with image classification. So an image classifier is a machine learning model that takes an input of an image and determines which category or class the image belongs to. So let's see how this works practically. So here if we have a ton of pictures and we have labeled them as cats and we're feeding those images into a machine learning model which we will see how it works that program will recognize that this is an image of a cat and return that label of a cat. So that's basically how image classification works. So lucky for us that we're using Swift, Apple has a bunch of pre-made models which are ready to use in our iOS projects. So let's head to developer.apple.com slash machine learning. And here you can see all of those frameworks which Apple has designed to accommodate machine learning. So we'll just head to models in this tab. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of models which Apple has provided us, which are ready to use in our iOS application. This is the drawing classification model and uh, these are the image classification models. So for this current project, we'll be using the MobileNet V2 image classification model. And here we can just view this. So here we can download the model with full precision, 32-bit floating point numbers. So once the model has been downloaded, let's open it up and check it. So here in this file, there's a bunch of important information about this model. Here we can see that this is a type of neural net classifier and uh, its size is 24 MB, so which means that this will take up 24 MBs in our iOS project. And uh, here, what's important here is, we can see that this model has an input type of an image that it will classify. But here it says that the image should be 224 by 224, which means that if the image is of a bigger size, this model will not be able to classify that. So we'll probably have to crop out our image to fit this size. And in the outputs as well, we can see there are two type of outputs. The first one is a class label string. This will show the most likely image category and the other one is a dictionary with a string and a double value which will show the name of the object and the probability of it being that thing. And as we can see this is about 74.7% accurate. So now that we have downloaded the pre-existing machine learning model from the Apple website, let's see how we can implement this in our iOS application. So just open up the startup project which is given in the description of this video. Now if you run this application, you can see that uh, this is a Swift UI application, but uh, only the UI of this application has been set up. This has a next button and a previous button and a button which classifies. And below the button is a text object which will show the string from the output of the machine learning model. So we have a basic UI setup done, but uh, when you tap on classify, you'll see that it doesn't do anything. So before we go on to implementing our machine learning model, Let's add the machine learning model that we had downloaded from the Apple website into our project. So we can just drag this ML model file inside of our project and make sure you click copy items if needed. And when we click on this model, we'll, we can see the different information about this model as we already saw that uh, in the input this model will take an image which is of the size 224 by 224 and in the output it will give us a string and a dictionary which contains a string and a double value for each item this classifier thinks it is. So in our model we'll just take up this class label and we'll show the text after pressing the classify button. So one more important thing in this file is this class which is model net v2. So as you can see, it's written here that this will automatically generate a Swift model class. So if we go back to our content view, so let's see if that class even exists or not. 
So we can create an object here, which is an instance of the mobile net v2 class. And as you can see, the mobile net v2 class appears here. And now we can go into the classify function and add the self dot model. So it has different functions in this model. And uh, one function that we will need is the predictions function to pass the image, but uh, it's taking the image in the form of CV pixel buffer. So let's see how we can convert our image object into CV pixel buffer. And then after that, we are going to have to crop it to 224 by 224 size. So let's see how we can convert our UI image file into this CV pixel buffer. So I have already implemented a UI image extension in this project. So what this will do is it will convert our UI images into CV pixel buffer. And we can also resize the image to our desired size in this extension. So let's implement that. So in our content view file, let's just create a new function and we'll call this image classification. And inside this function, So this line will give us the name of the image that we are currently on. So this is the add state current index property, which is showing the current image, which is uh, initially set to zero. And this function will give us the name of the image on which we have indexed. So now we have the name of the image and next we can get a UI image of that name. So this IMG will be the actual image So next we are using the resize2 method that we had implemented in the UI images plus extension files and uh, here we are resizing the image to 224 by 224 which is required for our model as an input file. And after this step is successfully done, we can just create a new variable which is called buffer. And here we'll provide the resized image. And convert it to CV buffer type. So if this function is not completed successfully, we can just return here. And after this, we can just create an output variable. And try to use our model in this file. And we'll send the image as the buffer now that we have the buffer image. We can get rid of this line and let's try to build this application. So going back to our ML model file, as you can see, this will return a class label as a string or class label properties as a dictionary of string and double. So let's first off, let's just unwrap this output file. So first off, let's add a label which will uh, display the result of this output on our screen. And now inside this output function, we can just say self dot classification label. And we can just simply assign the output dot 
class name to this. And here under the classify button function, we can just implement the image classification method. And now at the end of our file, we have a text element. And inside this text element, we can just display what the classification label shows. So this classification label will return output.class label from our machine learning model. And now let's go ahead and uh, give this a try. So if I press classify here, this will take this image and uh, this is giving the output as a sandal. Next, this is giving it as a sorrel. And uh, this is showing a pomegranate, but uh, this is an apple. But as you can see that our ML model has just 74% accuracy. So I think it's still good enough if this shows a pomegranate for this. So all of them are more or less correct. Now, uh, obviously we can add some more images and uh, we can try to classify all of them. So a machine learning model could obviously never be 100% accurate, but uh, it can give you a pretty good idea of what images you are feeding it and uh, the images which it had been trained on. So this is great and uh, our application is working. So that's it for the first video. In the next one, I'll show you how we can actually make the model which we have used in this mobile net V2 model. And we'll see how we can actually make this whole model ourselves. So thank you guys for watching.